This is Kristen. I'm with the FA Regional Office in Accra in Ghana. It's nice to see so many African colleagues here today. And thank you Ilkay and Carla for uh, helping organize this. So I know that you guys have been learning, I've been following the ASEERA course and uh, seeing also the excellent comments and questions you guys have had in the previous webinars. So we're going to talk specifically about Research for Life in Agora today. And I know that some of you, many of you are already registered for Agora or one of the other Research for Life programs. But for those who don't, it's, we're always happy to have a little uh -huh. overview again. So we're going to talk about what is Research for Life, Access, Agora specifically, examples of the kind of material that you can find, and if you don't know how to register, how would I register? So, I would have a quick poll if I was more organized, but uh, so Research for Life, it's a, uh, it's a partnership. There's four UN programs, there's WHO, WIPO, UNEP, and FAO. We also work with Cornell and Yale universities, more than 200 scientific and technical publishers, and how this manifests is through four programs. So you will be talking today mainly about Agora, which is research in agriculture. Many of you will also, may also know Hinari, which is research for health, OADA, that's research and environment, and ARDI is research for innovation and development. And they can all be useful to you, so uh, it's good to also look beyond just Agora, because uh, all four programs can have very useful material for you. So, um, why do we have Research for Life? Well, we know that um, it can be very difficult to have access to current scientific literature, that uh, peer-reviewed journals wow. are expensive, they're hard to get, even if you have the foreign currency in many cases, and um, the, the example here is from uh, a university in Nigeria where they, this is the newest information they had in 2015. And this was technical material for students and research to work from. As you can see, they're not very up to date. So we really want students, researchers, ministry colleagues and others to be aware that um, there is this wealth of peer-reviewed scientific research available. And it is important for you as researchers, scientists, lecturers, students, to uh, have this new information so that you can discover evidence, share information, and have evidence-based teaching policy and practice. And this is why Research for Life fills some of the gap. You know, the premise is there is a knowledge gap, but it does not fill all of it. It does not fix all the problems, but it can help address some of them. And uh, we want you to be aware this is a useful tool for you. So Research for Life itself is the umbrella program. This is the Research for Life website. And uh, collectively, there's over up to 69,000 scientific journals, ebooks, and databases. And you can see in the lower left-hand corner, we have a post saying, look, it's the Sierra First webinar, which you guys wow. are part of. I think this is the fourth one, possibly. And it also highlights the Sierra course. So there's a uh, Collect, there's individual work through the four programs, but also Research for Life as a partnership it wants to be visible and accessible and share information for you. You can see examples of the Research for Life ASP advocacy competition, where they highlight the important work of librarians and researchers. So what we're going to look at today is just to say that you know there are four complementary programs covering health agriculture, environment, development, and, and innovation. And if you register for one, you can register for all. So uh, it's not that you're limited to only one of these. The overall goal is to reduce the scientific knowledge gap between higher income and lower income countries. So what are the benefits of this? Well, as you can see from the picture, people say it's about having current information easy access, I can download it. In numbers, it's, actually, it's um, peer-reviewed international scientific journals, ebooks and databases. You can access full text articles from these journals, which you can download and save and print or read later. You can search by keyword, subject, author, and language. And um, it's about 72 countries that have access to this. So 72 countries have access to the, they have free access to Research for Life. 
That's what we call Group A countries. Group B countries pay $1,500 a year, but that is a substantive discount, about 99.9%. .9%. The money does not go back to the publishers. They're giving this for free, but it goes to capacity development. So you can see here on your map, do you see your country? You might. Every year this list gets changed. We review them. And uh, they look at a basket of criteria based on G gross national product, average income. So countries go out. For example, Cuba went out two years ago. And I think this year Nigeria actually went from free access to paid access. So every year it goes up. So you know it's good. It's a good sign that the countries are improving on that level, but we know it can still be difficult to have the money to pay the access fees. So we do try and help you with that. But most of the countries here you can see are blue, and that is free access. This is just to explain the eligibility again. Everyone asks about this, but they, they do look at this annually and look at a basket of criteria. So for example, last year they added um, added uh, unit refugee camps as a new category. So it's a, it's a cross countries, but it's a category. So for example, here you may see your institution type, which would be, could be a university, a professional school, a research institute, a government office, a ministry, a library, a local NGO, or an extension center. All of these are eligible, and we welcome your registrations. So we're going to look specifically at Agora because that is coordinated by FAO. So uh, it covers not just agriculture, but fisheries, food, nutrition, veterinary science, social sciences, there's also economics. There's a lot of really interesting topics. And um, you can see again on the map where the most of our registrations are. Very heav heavily in Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, but also Asia and Latin and uh, South America. Okay, and through this, there's about 6,500 journals and about 22,000 books. And about 3,000 institutions are registered. And we've estimated that the value of the collection available through Agora is about $6 million. Let's see, I can see Aki has a question about buffering. I hope that uh, Karno Ilkai can help you with that. The network can be slow here. So, in general, we would say that, uh, you know, how does Agora work? It's basically it's like your library. You can look up, uh, without a helpful librarian, but you can browse the collection, you can look for journals or books in a topic, you can look for a citation, or you can do a search using Summoner Scopus. And uh, you can actually browse the collection of journals without logging in, but if you want the full value of it, you need to be logged in using your institution's credentials because then they will know that you are from an NGO in Burkina Faso or a ministry colleague in Tanzania, for example. And then you will have a much bigger suite of materials available also in full text. So here is, for just, I'm, the next screens, I'll just walk you slowly through how you would, for example, find materials. This is the Agora homepage. It's www.fao.org slash Agora. If you're on the home page, there are two ways in. You can see here there's either access the content, which you can, you can go in and look, but you will not have full access. We do recommend that you log in by using your, your institutional credentials. You might not know what they are, but uh, usually the librarian in your institution will know. And if you don't know, please write to us, agora at fao.org, and they can check who your librarian or the contact would be. So here, you're logging in. It's a common interface for Research for Life for the four programs, same interface. Now the good news is, we know this can be a little bit buggy, but the good news is that there's a big authentication improvement happening this year. So we're going to see an easier authentication system coming later this year. So uh, look forward to that. In the meantime, please keep trying. It does work. So here. I've now logged on to the Agora Journal Portal, and I can see in the upper right-hand corner that I've logged in as Institution for Namibia. 
And uh, here, it's just to show you the architecture of the page. There's a content home. I can, here I'm looking at the journals. I can look at either accessible content or all items. If I look at all items, you'll see that some journals are marked gray, which means I don't have access, even from Namibia. So it, you may not have access to everything, even if you're logged in. If I go to the accessible content, I will see all the journals that are actually accessible to me. So that's just a useful, uh, useful differentiation. So here I'm jumping down and I'm looking at an example journal called Rangeland Ecology and Management. And now I've left the Agora portal. I'm actually on the journal portal itself, but it still knows that I'm here from as an Abibia Agora user. And I can pick up full text articles, abstracts and full text articles in PDF. Now this is really useful, especially for those of us in countries where internet can be slow or expensive. It's good to be able to, you can browse, you can download articles, you can read them later, offline, stuck in traffic. We know how bad traffic can be for some of us. So it's a useful function. You don't have to browse everything immediately. You can save it to your desktop or your smartphone. It works on a smartphone or your tablet and then read it later on. So here, another example. I have a citation. I might have used some of the other interesting software and, and uh, systems you've been looking at in your course. I have a citation related to fisheries. And I've gone to the journalist for M. I'm looking for marine and coastal fisheries. Sometimes the journals appear twice. There is no good reason for that. And I look at the journal. I can see that the issues available are from 2009 up to today. I scroll down, I find the article, and I can click on full article or PDF, and again, I can read this full text PDF, or I can download it and read it later. There we go. So here's the full text of it. So this is then coming in through the Taylor and Francis portal. So it's not that we have a, the collection of ourselves, it's a portal to get to the journal publisher websites, but they know that you're coming in as a research for life institution and you have much easier access. Another way to look is I may be looking by topic. I might not know what journal citation I'm interested in. So again, here I've picked up fisheries and aquatic sciences. And I can see what can I re see as a Namibian institution looking at fisheries and aquatic sciences. And some you can see are, are open access journals and some are not. But both can be useful and, uh, and valuable to you. So we want to give you as broad a spectrum as possible. You can also look by publisher. Maybe you're only looking for something from a specific publisher. That's another way to look at it. So you can retrieve, go to one specific Cambridge University Press, for example, or um, African Journals Online and see what's available. There's also a database collection. I know that in an early webinar they were talking about accessing databases and looking at data sets. And here is another way, another set of information that is accessible to you. So browse around. You can browse without logging in, but it's uh, I advise you to log in if possible. So a complaint we get is that the uh, interface is quite old fashioned, which I absolutely agree. And you would think there would be a simple search bar here somewhere, which there is not. But the closest we're looking at, it. but the closest we have is the summon interface. So if you click, go to the front page of the Gora portal and click on summon, then you will get a search interface. And you can just select your search term and search. So here's an example. It knows I'm coming from Agora. I've looked up terrace cultivation and um, I've got about 10,000 records. I can sort by relevance, I can sort by date. I can also filter it, say I only want journal articles, I only want full text, for example. I can export the citations and manage them later in Mendeley or EndNote or such. So it's another way to browse. But you can get quite up-to-date information. I was looking up armyworm the other day and Zika virus. You can find quite new publications here. If you have questions, please, I'm happy to answer them in the chat. So just a light overview. Oh, one more thing before I go on this page. You'll see up the upper right hand corner, it says, it says add results beyond your library's collection. 
That means you can also search things that are not just Threadgore, but also other ones. It can be useful for citation search. Okay, so here I've hooked up the first, second article, on Terrace Conservation. I can see it's actually published first online in January 2017, so it's quite new. And you have access to it. I can look at the abstract, the full text, I can download the PDF, and I can download the citation for later use. So the last thing I want to mention on the content portal is the book section. Not everyone knows there's about 22,000 electronic books available on this. So here again, these are full text books I can download chapter by chapter, and uh, there may be something useful to you, especially if you're interested in social sciences, economics, cross-cutting issues like uh, climate change. Okay, so just to wrap up, so there's a lot of challenges, and we know it, it can be very difficult for researchers to get access to the information they need, but there, uh, there's a steady influx of new scientific material added to the Research for Life collection. If you know of a peer-reviewed journal also in your country you think should be added, we're very happy to have suggestions. We work with Cornell on the content side, so we uh, sometimes journals come to us and sometimes we come to them and say, someone suggested this, could we please, would you consider adding it? And often they say yes. Since computer access can be problematic, I just want to highlight you can also do the search on, uh, you can search the portal on smartphones and tablets. That can often be easier for many of us. You can download the PDFs also to your phone and read them later. As we mentioned, the new authentication system is going to make it easier for us. Some of you are asking about logging on and registering. There is a joint registration form online for the four programs. Now you only need to register once per institution. And we do ask that you talk to your librarian first. So a librarian will normally know if you're registered already and they will have the username and password, which they can share within the institution. Of course, never online, never share the password online, but uh, you can register for more than one program at once. And uh, for the countries that have the access fee of $1,500 per year, that $1,500 covers, covers access to all four programs, not just one. That is a lot of uh, very useful technical information. Just as, uh, another point is that we have a joint training portal. Each of the four programs has a training page with some of the some online material, basic courses explaining, you know, searching in Summon, searching in Scopus, about ebooks, for example. We also have a joint section on the Research for Life website where we highlight issues like authorship skills and reference management tools, marketing strategies that can be used for people, information literacy. And these are, most of these are available as self-study presentations, so please feel free to browse and have a look. We're very happy to uh, see them being used. So overall, why do we have Agora? We have Agora because we believe that it is important to, essential to improve food security by increasing the quality and effectiveness of agricultural research, education, and training in low-income countries. And overall, for Research for Life, we do believe it is making a difference. It's all about having evidence-based decision-making in health, agriculture, environment, and innovation. And uh, it's about making this wealth of information and up-to-date scientific knowledge accessible to all corners of the world, especially the poorest countries. And through working with universities, colleges, research institutions, and ministries, and NGOs, making this information possible is making a difference every day. And I want to highlight, it's not just about ensuring that our colleagues have access to this. It's also about that this information feeds into your research, your writing, that we see more journals and articles being published from countries. They're underrepresented when it comes to scientific publishing. It's also about enabling and giving a stronger voice and making your research more visible. And to do that, we know that you need access to information, you need new citations, you need access to see what's happening out there. So this is why Research for Life is making a difference.
and we think it's a great program. We hope you do too. If you have questions, this is the email for Agora on the website for Agora. There's also the website for Research for Life, which has links to the other three programs as well, Hinari, Awada, and Ardi. And they're all four fantastic programs that complement each other. So if there's questions, please let me know and I will answer as best I can. Thank you.